to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The Bible says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever's led astray by it is not wise. Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our study of the truth about alcohol. In this series of lessons, we're focusing on moral subjects and subjects of interest today and what the Word of God has to say. What is the truth? on these subjects. And so we want to encourage you to locate your Bible. If you don't have it handy, locate your Bible, have it ready, as we're going to look at what God's truth is on the subject of alcohol. As always, we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. We want you to know that our lessons are being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Lord's Church in your area. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether it be on Sunday morning or Wednesday night or Sunday night for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who are deeply concerned about the truth and souls of men and women, and who would be happy to study God's Word with you. And so visit the Lord's Church in your area. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God and His Word better. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com? From there, you can access all of our... We have lessons on every book of the Old and New Testament. We have a wide variety of lessons on topical studies as well, and they're all available to you free of charge on our website. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of this lesson or any of our lessons, you can download those from our website. Just uh, fill out our free media request form, or we can send you a DVD or CD in the mail. And friend, as always, we want to encourage every person listening to make sure that we let God and His truth be what guides us in this life. We also want to remind you about our app that is available both for Android and iPhones from the respected app stores. It's a great way to study the Word of God on your smartphone as well. Friend, what does the Bible teach on the subject of alcohol? Before we even consider that, I want to ask you to think personally for a moment. Can you think of anybody in your family who has been negatively affected by alcohol? Studies show that nearly five out of ten homes are affected in some way by an alcohol-related problem. I can probably think of people in my family. You can think of people in your family who have been affected negatively by the use of alcohol. What does the Scripture teach on this subject? What can a Christian do to prepare himself to deal with this and to encourage and help others on the subject? Friend, let's realize this. A study of the Scriptures clearly shows alcohol has always been damaging to the family. From the beginning all the way up to the present, those who uh, abused and overused alcohol and used alcohol, it, it, it brought harm to those families. Let me give you an example. Genesis chapter 9, verses 20 through 25. After Noah and his family got off the ark, Noah built a vineyard, he drank of the wine, he became drunk, and Noah, in a state of stupor, had one of his sons do something to him that he should not have done. Had he not been under the influence of alcohol, that wouldn't have been possible. And yet it brought harm to the family because Noah wasn't as sober and alert as he should have been. Genesis 19, verses 30 through 38. You've got Lot and his two daughters, and, and they want to bring children into the world, and there they are with their father, and so they concoct this plan, that, that, and he wouldn't do it outside this idea. They know that. They concoct this plan 
They're going to get their father drunk. They're going to lie with him, and he can bring offspring for them. And were Lot not in that state of drunkenness, he wouldn't have done that immoral thing. How many immoral sexual things have happened because of alcohol? You can think of a couple of others. 1 Samuel 25 You've got Nabal and his uh, events that he contributed, his foolish choices that he made in a drunken state. You've got Tirzah in 1 Kings 16, 9, who was drinking himself drunk, the Bible tells us. And both of those families suffered greatly because of the choices that were made related to alcohol. And so, friend, from the outset, let's realize alcohol brings a curse, not a blessing, to the family. But as you think about alcohol and, and how the Bible speaks about that, friend, from a cursory look at the Scripture, one can clearly see that the use of alcohol is not a wise choice. Let me point your attention to some Bible verses. Would you open your Bible with me to Proverbs chapter 20 for just a moment? I want you to look at Proverbs chapter 20, and I just want to share with you a few passages from the book of Proverbs that show us that the use of alcohol is not a wise choice for a godly person. Look in Proverbs chapter 20. I want to direct your attention to verse number 1. The Bible says this, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. You see, the Bible encourages us to pray for wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5, The Bible encourages us to seek God's wisdom and to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Matthew chapter 10, and yet the use of alcohol, wine's a mocker, it's going to make fun of and laugh at you. Strong drink is a brawler, it's going to make you angry and out of your head. And whoever's led astray by it, that person's not wise. You want to make good, wise decisions, stay away from alcohol. You know, there's a direct, did you know that in the Bible, there is a direct link to alcohol and substance abuse and poverty? Let me show you that in the Bible. Look in Proverbs chapter 21. Look in Proverbs chapter 21. Someone who gets addicted and caught up into something and they spend all their money on that, that's going to lead them into a state of poverty and their family in that. Proverbs 21. I want you to look at verse number 17. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. Listen to this now. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. Look at Proverbs 23, verse number 21. The Bible says, For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. I wonder how many families don't have enough food in the pantry tonight because somebody's got an alcohol-related problem. Somebody's got a problem that is consuming all their funds and what they might be saving and using for the family, and instead they're using it on some addiction. And so a direct link sometimes between alcohol and poverty. But did you know that from the book of Proverbs, God's people are warned not to associate with the drunken crowd? Look in your Bible in Proverbs chapter 23. I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 20. The Bible says, Do not mix with wine bibbers or with gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. The Christian's influence. We want that to be above and beyond reproach. We want to be a good influence on the world. We want to shine as a light for Jesus Christ, Matthew 5, 16. And thus, we are warned clearly in Scripture, don't mix with wine bibbers and gluttons and drunkards. Why? Because they're not going to help our image and our influence and our reputation. They're going to drag us down. And so that's not something a Christian ought to associate with. And then on top of that, did you know that drunkenness all is going to lead to sorrow and misery in a person's life? Look at Proverbs chapter 23, verses 29 and 30. Who has woe?
Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of the eyes? Well, here's the answer. Those who linger long at the wine, those who go in search of mixed wine. Families that are steeped in sorrow and misery, heartache, marital trouble, family trouble, troubles at work and at school, oftentimes, you'll find substance abuse, alcohol, or, or drug abuse in, in those situations. And so, friend, we're encouraging a person today. The Bible teaches that alcohol use is not wise. God's people are to be wise and to pray for wisdom. Therefore, we encourage that one must abstain from the use of alcohol to be what God wants him to be. Look at Proverbs 23, verses 31 and 32. No, notice these words. The Bible says, Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. You want to get a clear image? of how alcohol use is not wise and not something you ought to play with. Friend, if I had in my hand today, if I had, if I had a, a rattlesnake or were holding a water moccasin and I said to you, boy, isn't this a pretty snake? C come over here, pet this snake for me, hold this water moccasin and, and see how it reacts when you hold it. What would you think about that? You'd be crazy to nobody in their right mind would do that, right? Don't look at the wine when it swirls smoothly in the glass. Satan is tempting you. It's so beautiful. It's going to taste good. It's going to make you 10 foot tall and bulletproof. What's it really like? At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Friend, it's not something that you want to hold and, and really value its beauty because it's going to hurt you in the long run. But on top of that, do, you realize, do we realize that the Scripture teaches the use of alcohol is going to affect your judgment and your perception of reality? Look at Proverbs 23, verse number 33. Proverbs 23, I want you to look in verse 33. The Bible says, Your eyes will see strange things, and your heart will utter perverse things. Your view of uh, your ability to make good judgments, your perception of reality, your ability to operate machinery, to drive a car, to, to make good choices. Friend, all of that is affected negatively by alcohol. How many people do you know? thought they could drink a little and get behind the wheel of a car, operate machinery, do something that required uh, one's utmost soberness and alertness, and they tried to do that under the influence and hurt themselves or sadly hurt other people. And friend, we say this with all kindness, but drunkenness, a state of drunkenness, the Bible teaches is going to lead one into a state of utter foolishness and stupidity. Look in your Bible in Proverbs chapter 23. I don't know how else to ex describe it except in that language. Look in Proverbs 23, and I want you to see verses 34 and 35. The proverb writer said, The drunken person, what's he going to be like? Yes, you'll be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, or like one who lies at the top of the mast saying, They've struck me, but I was not hurt. They've beaten me, but I did not feel it. And listen to this. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? Lying down in the middle of the sea, sleeping at the top of the mast? Well, that'd be crazy. That's what the person, they, they struck me, I didn't feel it. They beat me, but I'm not hurt. Give me another drink. That's all he's thinking about. And so it leads one to a state of foolishness and utter stupidity in your choices and your actions. And so when we think about God's truth on alcohol, the use of alcohol is not wise for the Christian. In fact, did you know that God's people who are considered royalty, kings and priests today, Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, that that's something that is not reserved 
for those people? Look in your Bible in Proverbs chapter 31. Turn your attention to Proverbs chapter 31, remembering that Christians today, in a spiritual sense, are priests and kings. Revelation 1 verse 6, we are a royal priesthood, a chosen nation, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Look at what Solomon was told in Proverbs 31 verse 4. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor princes intoxicating drink. Why not? Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Well, friend, I'm to live by God's law every day. And as people who are trying to live above the world and above reproach, I don't want to make bad choices and forget God's law and get caught up in something that I should not do. And so alcohol use can cause one to lose their reputation and their image, and it can cause me to forget what God's law, God's, how many people do you know that have good moral standards, that in their right mind wouldn't do things that would violate the teaching of the Scripture, and yet when they have a few drinks, they're a totally different person. They make bad choices. They do immoral things. They're involved in moral, immoral actions. Friend, that's just not something that a Christian should partake in. And so, how should a Christian be? I want you to open your Bible with me to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. Let, let's think about some Bible passages that teach us how a Christian should face this world and face temptation. Look in 1 Peter chapter 5, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 8. That's 1 Peter chapter 5. I'd like for you to look in verse number 8. Notice what the Scripture here says about the Christian's attitude as he faces the temptations of the devil. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word there for sober in the Greek language literally means complete abstinence from anything that would inebriate or make one drunk. Now I know as well as you that the writer is talking about in a spiritual sense. In a spiritual sense, I'm to be sober, I'm to be alert, I'm to be of sound mind because I know the devil's like that roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But friend, can I ask you this? Can you be tipsy in a physical sense and be sober spiritually? Can't do it. My spirit is locked inside this body. It's a part of this body. The two are uniquely combined together. And what I do to the body is going to affect the spirit. And so I need to realize if I'm to be completely sober, not have any kind of inebriate inside of me, if I'm to be absolutely free from any intoxicant, then friend, I need that so that I can make sure I fight the good fight against the devil every day. Friend, listen to the language again. Why do you need to be sober? The devil, listen to this now, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If there were a lion, if, you, if out in front of your house or if in your neighborhood or if in your home for some reason, there was a lion and he was on the prowl, would you have a few drinks? Would, would you take something that's going to make you not, I'm going to do everything I can to be sober, be alert, get out of that situation, and make sure that I leave there without any harm. Friends, spiritually speaking, shouldn't we be just as alert from what the devil is trying to do to tempt men and women and cause them not to be what they ought to be? You know, I read a poem once that kind of helps us to realize how Satan thinks about alcohol. Here's what it said. If you think alcohol is okay, just keep on drinking. And all the while you're drinking, Satan just keeps laughing. Friend, that's so true. With every drink you take, your defenses are going down. Satan is seeing and opening into your life. Your moral compass is getting off track. And you're liable to make decisions that are not right and that are not good. And so how should a Christian respond to all of this? Friend, I need to beware of what alcohol can do, and I need to abstain 
from the use of alcohol. It is not going to help me to be good, a, a, a better moral person. It is not going to make me more alert and ready to defend against the devil. It, it might cause me to make bad decisions. Look in your Bible in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 18. I want you to look in Ephesians chapter 5, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse number 18. That's Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse number 18 with me. Actually, back up to verse 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, oftentimes when people think about that passage, do not be drunk with wine, they say, well, I'm going to have a few drinks and not be drunk. Literally speaking, that passage is do not start the process of getting drunk. When does that process start, first drink? Don't start the process that's going to lead to that. And so don't be drunk with wine. Don't put yourself in a state where you're going to start that process of getting drunk. You know, I wonder how many people said to themselves, what how many people said, I'll just have a drink or two, and went way beyond that. How do, at what point, you know, if drunkenness is a sin, at what point do you know I'm drunk? Is it when you're a little tipsy? Is it when you're a little fuzzy-headed? And if half a beer, two beers, three beers makes you drunk, and friend, how do you know? How can you be sure that you haven't crossed that line? But above all that, what about your influence? And what about your image? I want to ask you to think about this. You see somebody coming out of a, a bar. You see somebody buying a six-pack of beer. You see somebody at a club drinking alcohol. Is that an image that you're going to associate with good and righteousness and that which represents Christ well? Or is that an image that is associated with evil and sin and ungodliness? Do you remember 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 22? Abstain from every appearance of evil. As a Christian, you need to be very careful about your influence. What about, what about some young person that may see you drinking? You, you may can say, well, I can have a drink or two. And what about a young person who sees that and they think it's okay? And they look at you and see you doing that and they say, well, I can do that too. And they can't. And they end up getting in trouble or they end up getting hurt or they end up making bad choices. What about your influence? on that person as they looked up to you. And then how can a Christian respond? Friend, we need to respond by teaching our children and by helping our family to understand the dangers of alcohol and drugs. Open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. You're not far from it if you looked in Ephesians 5 with me. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long in the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Our children are watching the way we live our lives. We're setting an example for them every day to help our children live the best life possible, to, to, to give them a, a, a leg up on being a good person, good citizen in the kingdom of God and a good Christian. Friend, we want them to see alcohol is not something that's going to help you to be a better person. It calls Noah, who Noah was a great man of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, he built that ark. He did great things. Made a poor choice. Something bad, really bad, happened to Noah in Genesis chapter 9. That wouldn't have happened to him or the curse that came to his family if he had not been under the influence. Lot, his two daughters, they did something, the incest, the unimaginable that happened there. Lot wouldn't have done that had he not been under the influence, and they knew that. That's why they got him drunk. 
How many families has there been abuse, both sexual and physical? How many children have been abused? How many wives have been abused? How many families are in a state of upheaval because somebody has an alcohol or a drug-related problem? You know, here's what we say to ourselves. We say to ourselves, I can do it in moderation. I can tolerate that. I'm in control of it. Friend, we fool ourselves when we think and we act that way. Eventually, it's going to get the best of us, and it's liable to hurt our family. It's possible that it's going to hurt those involved. It is definitely not going to raise my Christian influence. It might actually do very real harm to that. And so our encouragement today is this. Don't get caught up in what the world is pushing all of this. You want to be smart. You want to be sexy. You want to be handsome. You want to be cool. You want to have all the friends in the world. Drink this beer. Drink this alcohol. Drink this tequila or whatever it may be. Don't buy into that. Remember, don't look at the wine when it swirls. Here's what it's like, okay? Keep this image in your mind. Don't look at that that bottle of beer, that bottle of whiskey, that bottle of wine, when it looks so beautiful and swirls smoothly in the glass, remember when you hold that, it's like holding a rattlesnake. It stings like a serpent. It bites like a viper. At last, it's going to ruin you and do harm to you in so many ways. And so if you have an alcohol-related problem, seek help. Seek God's help. Come to God in prayer, read His Word, study His Word, find some programs that can help you to overcome that. Find people in your life who will make you accountable and give your heart to God to make sure that you can do better. And so if you're not a Christian, as always, we want to encourage you to become one. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world? John 8 verse 24. Would you turn from a life of sin to God and repentance, Acts 3, 19. Confess the beautiful name of Jesus before men, Matthew 10, 32 and 33, and be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins, Acts 2, verse 38. And then, friend, do your best to fight the good fight, to leave sin behind, and live for the Lord every day, Romans 6, verse 4. If we can help you in any way, friend, won't you call us or write to us? We'll be glad to help you. And visit the Lord's Church in your area, and you'll find people there who want to help also. We hope you'll join us next time as we study more about truth. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.